This tutorial is sponsored by Patreon. Thank you all for your support. Hello everyone, welcome to the new video. In today's video, I wanted to create this video because I saw so many tutorials on YouTube uh, not showing a proper way of doing stuff. Uh, basically, they would show you how to do something, but in reality you cannot even build up on it. It's all bad practices, uh, like ticks, uh, bindings, uh, casts, everything. So, in today's video I'm gonna show you how to be efficient in Unreal Engine 5 and how to write uh, clean code even as a beginner. So let's start. The first thing that we're gonna talk about today is UI. Okay, so you know when you create UI, right now we are in uh, my third person template, but when we create our UI, user interface, widget blueprint, let's name it master UI. Right now we can open it up and let's just do basic setup. Let's add the canvas and let's add some basic text to the canvas. I'll put it to be red for this example. And now uh, I'm just basically gonna uh, print this uh, to my screen. Uh, usually I would do this in player controller. Uh, it's much more efficient, but here I'm just gonna do it here because I'm just showing you out. Uh, I just wanna show it on the screen. So I'm gonna add it to the viewport like that. So now if I click play, I'm gonna see the text block. So let's say our uh, player, for example, has a currency. Let's say he has uh, money. That money would probably be of type float in your game. So let's put it as a float. So we have this currency here. So right now, there is a couple ways how we could do this. We can create binding or we can do it the proper way. So first I'm gonna do it the wrong way and then I'm gonna tell you why it's wrong. So let's go ahead and click create binding. So what this binding does, uh, it requires us to put something inside so it gets return value. In our case uh, we want to return money. But here's the thing. First, to have this working, we, we need to cast to the character or we will use interfaces, which we are gonna talk about later. I'm gonna be very slow with this one. So, uh, what this do is it's gonna run every second, every tick. So even more times per second. Sorry for that, I'm kinda sick. Okay, we can continue. Okay, so you would see why we don't want that. We don't want to run the currency text 20 times. Let's put this green just for my OCD, because it's money. So you see why it wouldn't be good and performant to run this code every second, because we want to run this code only when we want to do something with it. For example, we want to spend money, we want to receive money, etc., etc. So now we're gonna go to the, um, here to the go to function and let's demonstrate how would you uh, create this at first so what you would do is first you would need to cast where your variable is so bp third person character in my case uh, get player character this is the wrong way i'm just showing you and then you would get the reference for the character and then uh, from here you would just get the money uh, and this would work, of course. So now if I create some uh, random uh, event here that says uh, every time I press 5 I get, I um, don't know, like 50 money. Like that. So now if I go ahead in the game, as you can see it already updated, so it works. If I press 5, it adds money instantly. So, it works. Is it performant? No. So, what happens here is, while you are doing whatever you are, running around the cubes, your money is getting updated on every tick, even though we are not using it and we don't need it. So, you see why this is bad. So, let's do it a good way. 
So let's delete this. Let's delete this binding as well. Like that. And now, to be able to access this text in your graph, you need to give it a name first. Let's say money underscore text. And very important, set it as a variable. Because if you don't, you're not gonna see it in your graph. So if I compile now, I'm gonna see it here. Also, I want to delete this because we are not gonna use that. Okay, so right now what we need to do here is we need to create custom event and it's gonna be called update UI. This is how I like to do it. So I have one master uh, custom event and then I have, for example, uh, a lot of small ones like update, update money. Uh, also I'm gonna add underscore here. So what I do with this is I will pull update money here and uh, I, I will just pull this update UI. So now because we're not binding and it's not running every second, we need to do it by the hand. Yes, it's a lot more work, but you get the performance back and we should say performance where we can. So this update UI can be called basically when we construct this. So this will make sure when we load the game, your money is gonna be updated. So if you have 50 here, once we load the game, uh, it will update. But uh, of course, uh, this doesn't do anything right now because we didn't set up anything. So as you can see now, it doesn't update and it just says textbook. So we can update this by the hand. So we can get our money text, that's our variable right here, it's text variable, and we can just pull set text. But now, we need money variable. And a lot of you right now, we just go ahead and you would just cast here because if you are a beginner, this is what they teach you. And I don't blame you. Uh, what you want to do is use interface. I want to go slow so you understand, but interfaces, blueprint, blueprint interfaces are used so you can communicate between blueprints. So for example, right now, if I go ahead, and I create my blueprint interface and I can call it BPI tutorial. You can call it whatever you like, you can have whatever, like however you want these interfaces, you can use it wherever you like. In my case, 95% of um, stuff that I make and program in blueprints, I can use blueprint interfaces. I barely use casts. Same goes for Eventix. Eventix is good when you are working with animations, basically. But other than that, mm, you're not gonna use it so much. Okay, we have function here, but here we cannot do anything. But what we can do here is we can call this get current money. So right now, this does nothing. This is a uh, if we pull it here, inside of our BP third person character, we have to implement that. So let's implement BPI tutorial. If I press compile, under interfaces, I'm gonna have custom event that I can call anywhere. But for my case right now, where I want to get something, so I want to get the information, I don't want to do anything, I just want to get the information, I'm gonna do it different way. So events, only have inputs, but functions can have outputs. So right now I'm gonna create output here in my get current money and I'm gonna call it money amount. It will be type of float because my other variable is float. So right now if I press compile you're gonna see this uh, function became gray. Well because it's not event anymore so it cannot be yellow so it's a function. As you can see, just like your normal function that you would make in your Unreal Engine. But it has return node that asks, okay, give me the value of money. So I will pull this money and now he has the value. So can you guess how would I now connect this here? 
Well, because we did use interfaces, we don't need to cast, we only need to uh, call the function and give it a target that's gonna be where it's stored, in our case, bp third person character. So let me demonstrate. From here, I'm gonna call get current money, and you're gonna see in the brackets it says message. That means it's uh, communicating between blueprints, and the target should be where you used interface. So for me, I use it in third person character, so I will get player character. As you can see, you have get player character, get player controller, get player pawn, state, everything. For me, I'm gonna use get player character. So now, what I can do, for example, I can format this text, curly brackets money, so I can edit it here, so I can pull this to be my value, and let me add just some dollar sign in front. And this will update my money. Let's see how would that work. As you can see, it works, but if I press 5 to add $50, doesn't do anything. But it did update on begin play. Well, that's because we only called it on the begin play. So, now this update money, usually you can you could call it from the player controller because you would have the reference to your master UI in the player controller. So you could call this event. But now we do not have that. So what we can also do is this also cannot uh, can be interface. So let's go ahead and create another blueprint interface. Let's call this one BPI master UI. And let's call this one update money. We don't need the input, we don't need output this, uh, this time. So all that we need to do now is we need to implement this interface here. So we search for master UI. And again, we have the yellow interface, uh, which means it's an event. And now I can simply do this. I can do that, or I can just simply connect it to here. For now, to make it even simpler for you, I'm gonna do it this way. So now I will create function here when I give money. So let's call it add money. This is simple function. We can even copy this here. And let's just uh, add money connect to here. So let's copy it here like that. But what we also need is we need update money message. Also, we need a target to this. So either we would get the player controller reference and um, master UI reference from there. We could also, because we made it in the character, but usually it should be in the player controller. We can also use it uh, to promote the variable. So now we have master UI variable here. Delete that. Let's call it master UI reference. Uh, I'm getting some errors. Oh yeah. So this requires target. So right now, where did we put it? We did put it in the master UI, right? So it's either I would do it this way to get the reference, or if I or if I was in another. Um, blueprint where I don't have the reference, I would just get widget of class. And it would be my master UI, found widgets would be this. So what should it do now when we add money, we should receive $50 and it should update it. As you can see here, when we press 5, we do run this function. So if I go ahead and press 5, it's gonna update and it's not ticking, and it's only running when we need it. Okay, so now we resolved two problems. We resolved binding problems, where the variable is ticking in our text, and now we are updating manually, but we also stopped ourselves from casting. Also, if you delete this and just get the basic UI reference that you already have, you could also access this by your uh, player controller cast, because basically you would have the cast here, because of the enhanced input local player subsystem. 
you could uh, get this master UI reference from your player controller. But it's important you always, when you're programming, you always get the variables, so it's not hard coded. So also here, what I can do is I can simply pull this here, call it amount, and now if I'm gonna add the money, I can just simply say, okay, give me 15. And now we even try with this instead of the get all widgets, and you will see it's gonna work. Now we are getting 15. But it works. Okay, so this works, but I want to show you one last thing between like you and um, uh, actors in the level, for example. Um, let's go ahead in BPI tutorial, let's get a new function and call it add money or uh, increase money because we already have add money. So why I'm doing this now? is because I want uh, to be able to contact with other blueprints about receiving money. So this is going to be deleted right now. So in output, or in input, sorry, I just need money, amount. And now I can go here and I can call increase money. And if I want to do it this way, I can just simply I can just simply copy this here, right? But let's not do it this way. Let's just uh, delete this stuff here. Copy it here. We can delete that money. So what we are doing here now, we are making this accessible from every blueprint. So right now, um, I can set this here and it's gonna work the same way. You'll see in a second. So this does uh, do what we need. It will increase the money, plus it will update our UI. So very good practice. But we need something to interact with. Let's get something, for example, um, blueprint class actor. Let's call it BP cube. This will be just simple cube. That's gonna stay there. We can give it a color. And when we uh, overlap, with her box collision, what it's gonna do is simply it's gonna uh, disappear and give us something like um, $50, for example. So let's see how will we do this. So as per usual, if you have a, a box collision and you want something to overlap, Unreal Engine made it really uh, simple, add the event, on component begin overlap, what we want to do is we want to increase money, give it a 50, and after, the, after that I want to just, just destroy actor. So now we are contacting our third person character, so we need our get player character, this is not casting, so we just get it, uh, get our target. So the code knows from where it should look it. So this will work. Let's just add simple print string. Um, money received. Yay. And let's give it a green. So right now, if I go ahead and put this actor in my level, it's kind of big, but if I go and play, the moment I collide with his collision, it should say um, receive money, yay, and I should get, uh, if I believe, $50, and it should destroy itself. And as you can see, I'm getting that, so we are successfully uh, communicating between those blueprints without casting. So you can imagine what else you can do with this, how powerful this is. So that will be all for today, and in the Next series on my YouTube, I'm gonna try to um, cover these topics that are not covered in other tutorials. Uh, so if I did help you, please leave a like and comment. Uh, let me know if it helped. Uh, it will help me greatly with the motivation to continue doing this. Thank you all for watching until the end. I hope I helped you and see you in the next video.